Hello and welcome to my class. In this video, I am going to talk about making the practical file. The instructions given in this video will be specific for the paper Advances in Entomology, which is the paper 15 of MSc Zoology under Punjab University, Chandigarh. So, let's start with the type of file that we should use. There are many different types of files available in the market, but usually we use the files made with loose pages with a double punch. In these files, the left side is white for diagrams and the right side is ruled for writing the description or observation or findings. I'm going to talk about the left side of the, or the diagram side first. In this side, you should always make the border first. Students often make the mistake of making the diagram first and then making the border. But in that case, your diagram might be bigger and then it can cross the place where your border should be. So if you make your border first, then you have a proper estimate about how much space is left for your diagram. When you make your diagram, you should always start with the heading. What kind of diagram are you using? Or you are making. Either you can put your heading here or you can put the heading of the diagram here. Okay. Next thing is where should you make the diagram? The diagram should not be made exactly at the center space. You should make your diagram towards the left side. That way you have enough space available in the right side for leveling. When you make the levels, you should make them in parallel lines. If you make them in parallel lines, your figures will always look better. You can either use all caps or running handwriting for doing the levels, but they should start from the imaginary same longitudinal line. Okay, next slide. Next, let's talk about the right side where you write the description of what you have done here. It can be observation or it can be a protocol of an experiment or it can be the findings of your experiment or something like that. Now, in this side, you should put the date here. You can see that this file has a very, very old date. That is because this is my own personal file and I passed my MSc many years ago. Anyway, in this side, you should always start with the heading as well. If you have subheadings, then you can make them under bullet points or you can emphasize them with black ink. Please remember that in this side, you can use only blue or black ink. And in this side, you should only use pencils. Next topic that I'm going to talk about is the index page. The index page should be made according to the syllabus and in the beginning of the semester. Some students make the index page as they go on that is when they do an experiment they make it here they put the entry here but the problem with that is that if you make it along with your uh, topics some topics are not done in the order of the syllabus but the syllabus is always a well-organized list of topics right so if you make the index page according to the syllabus then you would have an idea about which experiment should go at which place so you can leave some pages blank and then you can make a very well ordered very well organized file in the index page you should have the serial number the description of what you have done it can be either identification or experiment or observation of any system etc then Another column should be designated for the dates. The next column should be the page number and then you should have a column for the teacher's comments or teacher's signature. Now, if you are going to make your content with the syllabus, then you should know what your syllabus is. So, I am going to give you the practical syllabus based on the theory paper of paper 15. So, the first topic is study of insect biodiversity in natural environment and preparation of project based on the observation. The topic for this, you can select yourself or your teacher will give a topic and you have to make this project in a separate file. So, I am not going to talk about this part here. 
The second topic is identification marks and taxonomic status of insect pests of crops, vegetables, fruits and spore products mentioned in the theory syllabus. So, let's look at the theory syllabus now. For crops, you have been given nine pests to study. For cotton, we have Pectinophora gossypiella or pink bollworm. Bemisia tabaki or cotton white fly, Disdarchus cingulatus or red cotton bug. Then for sugarcane, we have Pyrilla purpusella or sugarcane leafhopper, Scirpophaga nivella or sugarcane top borer. The pests of paddy are Hieroglyphus banian or rice grasshopper, Leptocoriza varicornis or gandhi bug. And then for wheat, we have Tanimacus indicus or Gugia weevil and Sesamia inferens or Wheat stem border. For vegetables and fruits, we have Dacus cucurbite and Raphidopalpa phobicollis or Olacophora phobicollis. These are also known as pumpkin fruit fly and red pumpkin beetle. For fruits, we have Drosica mangifera and Diaphorina citri. So, total 9 plus 4, that is 13 pests you have to study. Then we also have the pests of stored food products. We have Calosobrucus marculatus, Cytophilus oryzae, Tribolium castanea, and Cetotrega serralella. So, 13 pests here from the field crops and 4 pests for stored crops. For all of these, we need to know the identification marks, taxonomic status, and for these, we have to do the additional habits, nature of damage, etc. I'm going to make videos for each and every pest here. So, please watch those videos and the links will be added to the description box here. So, you can always go to those uh, videos and watch them and you will get an idea about each of these pests. Okay. Next topic is demonstration of dissection of insects for the study of following systems through charts, models or video clippings. Unfortunately, the dissections are banned now, so we just have to study the different systems. So, the way I teach these topics in the syllabus is by giving a comparative account. So, basically what I do is I take some representative orders and then in those orders, I describe the digestive system, nervous system and reproductive system. So, basically, you would have an idea about various digestive systems in different insects according to their orders and the specific points about any particular order or so on. Next thing, so according to this theory syllabus, we are also going to make our practical finds where you have to make a comparative account of these systems. Next topic is systematic position up to family and ecology of the following medical and veterinary pests. Here we have Anophilus, Culex, Aedes, Blowfly, Watfly, Horsefly and Freshfly. So you know that these are mosquitoes and these are flies. They all belong to order Diptera. You have to learn about their family names and also their ecology. What is ecology here? Under ecology, you have to know that what kind of economic damages are caused by these insects. That is what kind of, uh, in, uh, what kind of diseases are caused by these insects or what are their hosts, how do they attack their hosts, how do they find their hosts and how you can control them. Next topic is introduction to apiculture practices and handling of beehives. Uh, because of safety issues, we do not handle the proper beehives, but we study about the artificial bee boxes and how you can culture bees. In theory, we have to learn various aspects of apiculture and here in practicals, we will talk about how you can culture bees and what kind of artificial bee box you can use for keeping the beehives. Next topic is study of male and female external genitalia of insects through permanent slides. So, we will be showing you permanent slides and if uh, the online classes go on, then I will obviously make videos which you can watch and get some idea about the male and female external genitalia. 
Then we are going to talk about study of different types of larvae and pupae with the help of charts, photographs and diagrams. So different insects according to their order or taxonomic status, they have uh, different kinds of larvae. So we will talk about those different kinds and also different insects have different kinds of pupae. We are going to talk about them as well. Now let's go back to the practical files. When we talk about different systems, like you have digestive, reproductive and nervous system in your syllabus, we are going to do the diagrams here and then you have to write the descriptions in this side. Okay. So here I only, I'm showing you only one diagram, but there will be multiple diagrams for every system. Okay, if you have multiple diagrams which are small, you can use the same page with a border in the center. Okay, for pests, you have to in the left side write the systematic, uh, systematic position first and this systematic position should always be written in a slant. Okay, so you should not write them like this. You should always write them in this way. So basically the place where you start the kingdom animalia, you should leave a little space and then you should start phylum octopodum. So all the uh, insects have a particular uh, state in their life cycle which is more damaging to the crops. So most often it is not the adult. In Pyrena purpusilla, of course the adult and nymph both can cause damage to the sugar cane plants. But in case of Scyrpophaga nivella, only the larva causes the damage, not the adult. So when we are talking about the pest biology, it is a good practice to learn their life cycle as well. So either in this left side, you can only draw the adult or you can draw the whole life cycle so that you can show the injurious phase or the damaging phase as well as the adult. In this case, the nymph and the adult both are injurious to rice plant and in this case too, both adult and the nymph are injurious to sugarcane but here only the larva is injurious. Here I am going to show you how to draw the types of larva and pupa. Here you can draw different types of larva and here you have to write the description of different kinds of larvae. For pupa also you have to make the diagrams in this side different types of uh, pupal uh, stages and you have to draw the, uh, you have to write the description here. Finally, once you are done with making your file and you have all the pages signed, then you can make your cover. The cover can be made neatly like this or your cover can be made like this, whichever way you prefer but it should be covered all the time. You should not bring a file without the cover and it should look neat. Thank you. Hope you like this uh, video and you can watch the instructions on specific topics later on. I'm going to make those videos and please follow this protocol for making the files.